all right guys I uh, want to make this video we are on our way to California this morning taking four dogs with us for my workshop in Turlock next week um, which I'm super excited but this video right now is for the workshop following the one in California which is possession games 2.0 April 25th through 28th here at my place in Plant City, Florida. Um, the reason, well, there's a few reasons that I decided to make that workshop, but I'll give you a few of them. One is I, the video and the concept of possession games I came up with in the 90s, and it's been very popular around the world. Um, lately, I see trainers or trainers, influencers on social media giving seminars, teaching how to play, and and I cringe. It's it's really like um, it's just not what games are about. Um, so I want to help the people that do want to learn what possession games are about and how to if if they have problems if anybody has a problem not being able to play correctly or at all with the dog um, that would be the workshop for you um, i'll give you an example with how if you take malino for example many people don't understand what malino Yes, even though it's super cool right now to be a trainer, you have to have a Malinois. That's just a, a given. Like if you don't have a Malinois, you're just an average trainer. And once you have a Malinois, boom, you're an expert. And now you can teach and you can give advice to anybody on YouTube just because you're an expert. Uh, it's pretty dangerous, it's pretty shitty, and <clears throat> I will tell you something. When you play, like, we, you know, as trainers, you've seen, and you probably are one of them, that you let the dog out, you decide to play, you give him a toy, and then you encourage him to come to you. And you do that all over again, every single time. You play a little bit, the dog grabs the toy, and you encourage him to come to you. The reason 99% of the trainers do that is because they have seen it elsewhere. The, um, you can teach a dog to come to you as a way of interaction, but it becomes more of an obedience than, than anything else. It's like, okay, no, you cannot go around. You have to come to me and you have to jump on me. Not just that you have to come to me, but you have to jump on me. So when you force, when you teach a dog to do that, you're forcing him to do certain behaviors for you. And that's why I say that it's, it's like obedience. It's not really anything else. When um, done correctly and the dog is sound and playful, that kind of obedience at best will become part of the play. It's not going to be like, okay, I'm down and sit and suppressed. Um, not at all, but <clears throat> it's still a form of obedience because you are teaching it. And again, at best, it becomes a form of part of the games that you're playing. Talking about the jumping still. Now, if you understand genetics, you will also learn something, um, especially Malinois is a super good example for this because there is dogs 
that will jump on you when they first see you, when they are excited, and um, for various reasons. But they do that not because you're teaching them, not because it's obedience, not because it's part of the play. They do that because they are genetically programmed, they're selected. Somehow, along the way, that trait has been selected for. So, that means that certain dogs, when they come up and jump on you, for them, this is a, a, a need. This is not something that you train. This is not something that you reinforce. This is an innate behavior that it's already programmed. There is nothing for you to do about it. The only thing that you can do that makes sense is allow the dog to do that and use it when you play, use it when you train, put it in your advantage. Um, many pet trainers, when, when you see a dog like this, they will be like, no, let's ignore him, let's teach him alternative behaviors, all this differential reinforcement stuff. <clears throat> sure, we can do that. But that means you are not recognizing what that dog is selected to do, what is the genetic predisposition, and why ultimately they want to hug you and jump and stay here and climb all over you. This is not dominance, although it can be combined with, but in the purest form, this is not dominance, this is not trained behavior, this is not a play interaction. I'm going to show you in, in a little bit. We're going to go in, in the kennel and I'm going to show you a dog. <clears throat> Just because you have um, two people and one is doing something and the other one is doing the same, it doesn't mean that they're doing it for the same reason. When you have a a yogi in some really weird position and if I sit next to that person and I try to imitate him I'm gonna be suffering I'm gonna be in pain while that yogi is left his body and is just in a, in a very different mind state so very similar again when you recognize and you understand genetic predisposition versus taught behaviors, then you will know what to utilize, how to utilize and how to play way better than, than what you see. It's one thing to see somebody play and try to mimic. It's very different to play with the understanding what you're doing. So when I, like in a lot of the seminars, and you will see this when you, if you are coming to the workshop in April, um, I would see a trainer playing with their dog. And they do pretty well. They've, let's say, had the dog for four years, five years already. They're playing. There's no problem with that. But because of the understanding of genetics and what play triggers, I can take the person's dog and I can start to play. Within one minute, I can guarantee you that their dog's gonna like to play with me way more than how they would play with their owner, which is insane. This should not be the case. But the reason this happens is again because possession games has an objective, has rules, has structure, but more importantly, I teach you how to recognize and incorporate the dog's genetic predisposition. You have 
breed genetic predisposition, you have individual selection as well. And, and learning what makes that dog tick. This is uh, um, what we're going to be learning uh, in April. So, now we go inside and I'm going to show you the dog that I'm telling you about. It's not one dog, it's, it's just I can show you that same uh, genetic trait with quite a few of our dogs because it is in the lines that we breed. But as well, we have other lines where that's not the case. They're just as playful, but they do not need to hug you. They do not need to clinch on you. And they, you have to understand, they don't do it because of dominance. They don't do it because of insecurity. They don't do it to please you. It's really what I would call it. It's a genetic need that you can decide to satisfy it and go along with to some extent or discourage it. Both will have their pros and cons as you can start to understand what I'm talking about. Hopefully you do understand what I'm talking about. Um, <clears throat> so when you compare these two dogs, the one that gets the toy and I go, hey buddy, come, 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 oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And now I keep him here, then I play a little, I let him jump down, then immediately I call him back to me. This is what, once again, I would tell you that that's obedience and you're incorpora incorporating that obedience in the way you play with the dog. Nothing wrong with that. It's just not the same. It's apple and oranges when you compare a dog that is trained to do versus a dog that needs to do. How you interact with these two dogs is dramatically different if you want to be uh, um, an excellent trainer and, and maximize the power of possession games. Um, so, we're going in a kennel. I'm, I'm not sure what's going on there. I haven't been there this morning. As I said, we're trying to pack trying to get ready for California. Um, it's kind of exciting getting, haven't been there for a seminar in a long time. Um, so really, really looking forward to. But as I said today, possession games is in my head. And um, if you want to learn, how to play the way I teach. You have to believe me what I'm gonna tell you. You cannot follow somebody on YouTube that is looking like Ivan and that moves like me. This is not what it's about. That's kind of like the whole point I'm trying to make. And to be clear, I'm not saying that some of those influencers cannot teach you anything. They most likely can. Um, but it's very easy to get fooled. It's, it's super easy to get fooled nowadays and see, oh, that looks exactly like this. I, why, why should I try to learn it from there when I can just learn it right here? So it doesn't make sense, but that's how it works. And Hopefully, because of that, um, I think I'm starting to ramble a lot, so why don't I just show you what I'm talking about? Hopefully, a lot of you will understand that dog training and playing with dogs has a little bit more than just doing an activity, than just lifting the dog up and down, left and right, letting him go, making him jump on you. 
that's not what possession games are about people all right so let's go and and see what we do here <coughs> Hopefully, the dogs are not out. I, I, the, the guy that I'm thinking to get out to show you, he might be, he's actually out in an outside run, which is okay. I'm gonna let him in and we're gonna do it this way. Or I will go to him. All right, so here we go. <coughs> All right, so this is what I'm talking about. This is not trained behavior, this is a need. This is innate behavior that you can either reinforce and use it, or you can destroy it and make the dog very weird and uncomfortable around you because you think you're a good dog trainer. This is what happens if I let him down. You know already what happens, right? So you can understand when I play possession games with this guy, he will come and he will slam the toy into me because that's what he does, not because I taught him. Understanding that goes a long way and yeah, it's just one of the things that I'm gonna teach you in April, so. All that you can see in a dog, like all that can be trained, okay? But, Trained versus a need versus genetic predisposition are two different things and you better understand them because otherwise you will remain on an average level of dog training. Take care.